Thermal modification. Uh, well, it depends who you talk to, really, doesn't it? What thermal modification is. Um, it requires you heating the wood in an inert atmosphere above a certain temperature. And what that certain temperature is depends on who you talk to, but probably something like 160 degrees centigrade plus. But if you start heating wood at any temperature, uh, there will be a measure of degradation going on. And that uh, extent of degradation depends on the temperature and it depends on the time. So if you have wood in a, an environment, maybe at 60 degrees centigrade, it will be very, very slowly degrading, but it only really starts to become noticeable at temperatures above about 120, something like that. And what you normally associate with any thermal degradation is a darkening of the wood. And obviously the wood's gonna dry out, so you're gonna lose water. That's the first thing that's gonna happen. So that's the first significant event, is the drying out of the wood, and eventually you reach your moisture content of zero. And then the type of degradation that will occur depends very much on whether it's going to be uh, in the presence of moisture or whether it's going to be a dry degradation. And it depends whether there's oxygen present or not. So in a thermal modification, oxygen is removed either by using a nitrogen blanket or a steam blanket, those are the usual ways of doing it. And you get different types of reactions occurring depending on whether uh, there's moisture present or whether it's done in a dry environment and there are pros and cons behind each one. I think these days most of the processes use some sort of a, what's called a hygro thermal process. Hygro thermal so that you have water present and because water is present it encourages certain types of reactions to take place in the cell wall and the types of degradation reactions that are encouraged or which take place in thermal modification um, involve uh, the hemicelluloses degrading those are the most susceptible part of the wood polymers, the hemicelluloses, so they are the least thermally stable. Also, um, there is a more chemical scientific term for that, which is called labile. So they are thermally labile, which means less stable, more susceptible to degradation, particularly when you get the presence of moisture. The hemicelluloses have got acetyl groups on them. Those acetyl groups are quite easily driven off, particularly when there's moisture present. That generates acetic, acetic acid. That acetic acid starts attacking the hemicelluloses, causing hydrolysis. Uh, you also get reactions occurring with the lignin. Not really fully understood. Um, if you read some textbooks, you'd think we'd understand everything about wood, but actually it's pretty complicated. Uh, there's still lots of things we do not know or do not fully understand. So there's certainly reactions taking place in the lignin, and quite often you will see um, when it comes to lignin that we have this happening. Reticulation. Uh, I don't even know what that means, but it's a word that's used a lot, reticulation. Um, ask somebody, preferably a French person, I think, what that means. Um, maybe it's reticulation, I have no idea. I think it means cross-linking. I think you get extensive cross-linking with the lignin. But this is more a hypothesis than the, it's a thing that we've proved. We do get reactions of the hemicelluloses to form uh, furfural compounds and these can certainly be involved in cross-linking processes and they will react with the lignin so there's certainly something going on there I wouldn't deny that you also get a smell of sort of caramel you've, you've got a caramelization reaction taking place again it's mostly the hemicelluloses that are responsible for this and particularly the C5 sugars are particularly susceptible to degradation forming furfurals um, and giving you this sort of caramel smell but if you look at the literature regarding food science and what happens in caramelization processes you'll realize there's an extremely complex chemistry taking place and wood is a complex material anyway so there's no doubt that the reactions that are taking place in thermally modified wood are also very complicated um, the result of all this is that we reduce the moisture susceptibility of wood
of wood. Uh, so we reduce the moisture susceptibility, and if you read the literature, which always sounds very authoritative about these things, you will read that it's because we've reduced the number of hydroxyl groups, and because we've reduced the number of hydroxyl groups, uh, there's nowhere for the water to absorb. End of story. Uh, unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. Um, there's a lot we don't understand, as I said, but certainly some of the work that uh, we did quite some years ago where we were measuring hydroxyl groups uh, and we looked at thermal modification. Yes, they did reduce, but there didn't seem to be any correlation between the number of hydroxyl groups and the sorption properties of the wood. So there's more going on than simply removing hydroxyl groups. There's certainly cross-linking going on. There's probably other reactions that we just don't know anything about at the moment. I haven't mentioned the cellulose. The cellulose does participate to some extent, but not it's not that susceptible to thermal degradation, largely because it's so crystalline. So it's, it's quite an inaccessible substance. It will begin to degrade at higher temperatures, but it doesn't participate that much uh, in this thermal degradation process. Uh, and one of the main things that you'll notice about um, thermally modified wood, and it's quite common with most modifications to some extent, is that the wood becomes brittle uh, it loses this property of toughness, which is a very important property that wood has. Um, that is because of the thermal degradation. That certainly um, contributes to it, but also because of the, the lower moisture content. So reducing moisture content is good from the point of view of dimensional stability. It's good from the point of view of increased resistance to decay organisms, but it's not a good thing from the point of view of mechanical properties. So. Uh, I really wouldn't recommend that you use thermally modified wood in structural applications.